I got up at three in the morning to drive to Peelensburg National Park in Northwest Province. So that's a drive of 120 miles, 200 kilometers. And uh, it takes about two and a half to three hours over some rather nasty potholed roads to get here in the dark. So it's been a little bit fraught, but I got here before sunrise, which is happening over on the right. At the moment, there's a soft orange glow in the sky and I'm looking forward to the day ahead. Now, I came here to see elephants today, so I'm hoping to see them. We don't get them that much around Johannesburg, so you have to drive a bit to come and see them, but I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully, I'll see them and get some shots. Coffee time, I think. I'm still in the shade from the, the mountain on my left, but it's a nice place to hang out next to this dam at this viewpoint, and uh, a nice place just to get organized, ready for the day, and to just scan the banks of this dam for any activity, maybe some jackals or something uh, coming down to drink. And it's al always worthwhile using your ears as well, just listening to what the birds have to say about the goings on in the bush in the early morning. I love seeing pied kingfishers because they're wonderful little birds to photograph. They're quite gregarious, they travel in groups, they're quite bold, quite confiding, and they've got this wonderful habit of hovering in the air uh, over a fish before diving down from a great height. And this hovering behavior makes it relatively easy to get shots of them in flight. I've probably got all the shots I can out of the dam area this morning, so I've decided to head deep into the center of the Pillensburg, right into the ancient volcanic crater. And in the middle there is a dam called Manque, and that is a wonderful place to find wildlife because of good feeding and good water supply. And it's actually on a dirt road there that I saw the breeding herd of elephants last time, so I'm gonna head down that road first and keep my eyes peeled. You may or may not have noticed that this elephant is actually tuskless. At least there's no tusk on the right hand side. And that's actually a genetic mutation and a response to hundreds and hundreds of years, if not thousands of years of hunting and poaching of elephants along the east coast of Africa. And 
that mutation can actually spread quite effectively uh, in the elephant population. Uh, and obviously without tusks, they're far less of a target. Well, I've just seen a, uh, a rather beautiful bird, but rather skulking bird, called a tit babbler, believe it or not. Uh, and they like to hang around under the, under the bushes in this kind of stuff here. But it's quite a striking bird with a lovely rufous vent and uh, grey feathers and rather engaging tail with beautiful white spots on it. And they never really sit still enough to get a photograph, unfortunately. But when you come to a place like this, where there's a place to get out, so this is a, a bird hide, but it's not functional, but there is a toilet still here. I would advise getting out and trying to photograph any resident and confiding bird species that one might see here. Right, let's get out of here. So while well, I've been busy filming spur fowls trying to eat a stick, uh, this guy that I just met has seen two lions, several rhino, and some elephants this morning. Don't know what I've been doing. Too much farting around, filming, and not enough looking. What do they say? One man's shit is another man's treasure? Well, that's definitely true in this case. Any kind of accumulation of dung. Uh, so rhino middens, because rhinos or white rhinos return to the same places along their territory and deposit their dung over and over again. And some of the other animals do. But any kind of accumulation of dung generally attracts some interest from other species. So birds, for instance, really like scratching around in it, looking for grubs and things like that. So I'm sitting here next to a pile of dung, waiting for the birds to fly in, scratch around, so I can get a picture of them and then fly off again. One of the really nice things about Pilensburg, as opposed to a lot of other places that I photograph, is the hills in the background. And the reason I like it is for perched birds, it actually is really easy to find a, a background for them. You don't have to place them against a tree, uh, you know, because you, you normally would struggle because for those perched birds on bushes and things like that, their background would be sky and very bright sky at that, especially with this slight overcast. So having a handy hill to place behind the bird, it makes photographing them so much easier. It's about midday and the light's pretty harsh and I haven't got much else to do except drive around and photograph small birds. And uh, they're driving me nuts because they've got such wonderful little thornfeld and bushfeld species here. Things like uh, violet-eared waxbills, blue waxbills, colorful little birds basically. Tiny, tiny, tiny little birds. So I've got uh, an 800 millimeter or the 400 with a two times teleconverter on it and a 5D Mark III. And I'm just photographing a scrub robin 
and uh, a few other little birds hopping around down here. And the reason they're interested in this little spot in particular is because there's a small uh, ant colony there uh, with a little mound and they're picking off the ants. And I can see that the birds frequent that area. It's quite easy even, even if there's no birds here because there's a lot of bird droppings around this small mound. And on the uh, small rocks that are around about as well, there's one or two droppings as well, which indicates that potentially a uh, scrub robin or similar type bird with that kind of behavior, that hopping kind of behavior where it hops up on the rocks, takes a look around and hops down again. That kind of bird is in this area, even though I haven't seen it. So looking out for little telltale type signs like this can really help you nail down a species or nail down a shot. Now ideally I'd be flat on my stomach on the ground, maybe uh, with my camera resting on a beanbag or something, photographing this. Unfortunately I'm up in the Land Rover photographing downwards so it's not going to make for a great shot, but it does make for a nice anecdote. It's 1.15 now and I've been on the road since what, three this morning? And uh, I'm still hunting for my decent sighting of elephants. I did see one elephant this morning, rather distant one. I'm hoping for better than that. So I'm traveling into the northeastern corner of the reserve. And it's a place that I don't, or haven't been to that often. Uh, I don't recall it. It's very pretty. Uh, we've got lovely turning leaves and little hillocks and lovely rocks and these little orchards, if I can call them that, dotted around the hillsides are really beautiful at this time of year. But with this high grass, game viewing is not easy. So I'm keeping my eyes peeled for those elephants and hopefully I'll see them today. If I don't, well, I guess that's wildlife photography. You head out, you do your best, sometimes you don't get the shot. Here's a sign there might be some elephants around. There's a broken branch in the road, and that's a typical thing that they do. They break the trees down, they peel the bark off, and they eat the, uh, the bark and the leaves. The leaves look a little bit wilted though, so I don't think it was within the last hour or two. Uh, maybe earlier this morning or last night. The search continues. I found a beautiful black-shouldered kite in this afternoon light, preening itself in the top of a thorn tree. Looks absolutely stunning. So I've got 800 millimeters on the end of a 7D this time. And I'm shooting this at ISO 400, f8, and 1 over 1,000th one of a second. And it's very tight on the bird. Uh, he doesn't look like, or it doesn't look like it's going to fly. So I don't think I've got the time to wait for that to happen. There's a lot of preening going on. He's calling as well, which is quite nice to hear. And I'm just underexposed by one third of a stop, just in case those white feathers blow. And as usual in Pilensburg, you can place the bird against a hill instead of the sky for a background, which really, really helps. Well, I did actually manage to uh, catch the bird in flight. And as I said, the 7D was way too tight for a bird that size and this close. So uh, I, I don't know if I got very good flight shots, but I did uh, reduce the exposure by two thirds of a stop just to up the shutter speed for the, for the moment of flight. And uh, I also um, increased the ISO, so I had one over, I think it was one two fiftieth of a second or one over sixteen hundredth of a second. 
and I also increased the depth of field by dialing in more aperture. And when the bird flew, it's actually surprising, it flew straight towards me. And if I'd had a wider camera, something like the 5D, or maybe this 7D on a shorter lens, maybe this 100 to 400, I'm sure I would have got much better flight shots. Now having said that, I got much better shots on the perch using the longer focal length and the reach of the 7D Mark II uh, at 800. So you have to weigh up your opportunities and weigh up what you think is going to happen. Now I didn't really think that bird was going to fly in the time that I had available. I got lucky. So uh, that informed the choice of lens and camera that I used but I was uncomfortable with that choice. Well, in case anyone's wondering the lengths you have to go to to, uh, to vlog in wildlife photography, this is it. This is my substitute hat, my substitute lucky hat, GoPro on the head and a really weird hairstyle. This isn't gonna be a photograph, but it might be a video. I absolutely love this kind of afternoon light with the flare-filled atmosphere, the dust and the seeds and the insects all visible in the shot. And what makes this atmosphere so special are the drongos that are flying up and seizing insects in the air as the rhinos walk through the grasses and disturb them. Now unfortunately these being white rhinos and grazers, their heads are buried deep in the grass and they're difficult to photograph but this light is absolutely sublime.